Hi, welcome to Yobi's Holiday. Why don't you come on in, put on your swimming suit, and let me take you around France. What do you think? Come on, let's go. In this video today, I'll be showing you some different stuff that was really easy and simple from our perspective. So I'm going to show you some things that I really liked about French grocery stores. I'm going to show you this park that we visited all the time. And I'm going to show you some things that we really love to cook at home. So can I just say that I love French grocery stores? They are massive. Every single one that I entered was like an Albert Hein not XL, but XXXXL, <laughs> or like a traditional, like American sized grocery store. Certainly having shops like this, um, of this size contributes to the ability to offer a bigger selection of products like yogurts. There were literally three or four aisles full of different flavored yogurts and dairy desserts. We could buy a different flavor each time we went shopping and still not try them all. But what really blew me away and what I would love to see more of in the Netherlands is how much eco-friendly um, packaging and different options they have. So from hand soaps to fabric softeners, laundry detergent, and even dish soap, these items are available in soft refill pouches. So instead of having to buy the big plastic container each time, you just buy a tiny refill and then there is significantly less waste produced. Another eco-friendly thing that caught my eye was the toilet paper, which is sold either with a flushable inner carton tube or even better, a toilet paper roll without a center carton at all. Small changes like this are easy to adopt for most people and would really help to relieve some of the pollution issues that our planet is facing. So I do hope to see more of this in the Netherlands in the future. One of the local parks is called Pré la Rose. This beautiful park has so many free activities for the young and old, and it was where we spent a lot of our time. This park is dedicated to scientific discovery, which was incorporated in different features throughout the entire park. There are really beautiful walking paths where you're surrounded by tall trees and flowers and large metal sculptures of insects that kids can climb and touch. Different signs scattered throughout the park teach curious minds about flora and fauna that you might see. A favorite of my kids was the Stegosaurus dinosaur climbing playing structure that is dedicated to Georges Cuvier, a famous paleontologist from the Franche-Comté region. This structure is open year-round all day. One day, we even got caught in a thunderstorm and had to seek shelter from the rain underneath. The other favorite activity for my kids was the merry-go-round that was open most afternoons. It was so nice for them to ride when their little legs got tired from running and playing. Three times a week, some local farmers, they bring their ponies to the park and parents can pay a few euros for their kids to go for a little ride. Further into the park, there are interactive art installations that are also educational. Kids can play and explore what it feels like to be a hamster in this giant wheel. And yes, it hurt a bit when I fell, <laughs> but I'm glad I was alone and nobody saw that, except you now on the internet. <laughs> These spinning lollipops teach kids about color and design and depth. In another part of this park, there are stages set up where free concerts are organized in the summer weekends, a different genre of music each time. Patrons bring their own chairs, their own bottle of wine, and maybe something to snack on and just enjoy this free outdoor lovely activity. There are truly so many things that you can do in this park, from riding your skateboard in the skate park to playing bocce ball with your friends. And of course, there's even a little cafe where you can enjoy a coffee or an ice cream. 
As I said, this park was the place where we took our kids the most, and each time we explored something different and enjoyed it in a different way. It was really lovely. So we ate at home for all of our meals. With two kids on very different schedules, it was just too difficult to coordinate with the timings of French restaurant opening hours, which are actually open for lunch and dinner, but not the hours in between, which made it difficult for us. In cooking at home, we discovered a few delicious but very simple items that I'm going to share with you. First of all, this nature bio veggie mix. It was so good because it already has herbs mixed in with the veggies. Also, I noticed that the veggies were cut into much smaller pieces than the veggies I would normally buy in the Netherlands, which made them easier to feed to my little people. Next up, we love these gnocchi, which instead of boiling in the traditional way, you saute them in a pan with a bit of butter. The middle stays soft and gnocchi-like, whereas the outside gets a delicious crispy texture. My kids loved these plain, but they could also be covered with a pasta sauce and still be so good. My daytime drink of choice all summer, so much so that I even brought 12 cases home, <laughs> is this Perrier Lime Sparkling Water, but it must be in the can. In the Netherlands, I've seen it in plastic bottles, but trust me, the taste is not the same. When it's cold from the fridge and in a can, it just tastes so refreshing on a hot summer day. Of course, no trip to France is complete without Macron. Nope, not the president, Macaron, the cookies. <laughs> These cookies are sold in Lux bakeries, but they're also in just regular grocery stores. We certainly indulged in some of these. But after dark, when my kids were in bed, I loved staying up, chatting with my family, and drinking Rose d'Anjou wine. This light, crisp, and refreshing rosé wine was recommended to me by my French mother-in-law, and she was so right. It is yummy. Luckily, Hal & Hal here in the Netherlands sells this for about 5 euros a bottle, so you can definitely try it if you're interested. So while my kids spent the entire month in France, I didn't. I actually came home for about 10 days mid-month to deal with some huge issues that we had with our garden shed. Now even though our house is only one year old, a mistake that I made on the day that we moved in haunts me to this day. What happened, you ask? Well, I made the mistake of leaving a bag of dog food in the shed. This innocent mistake led us to having some very unwelcome mice living in our shed. Not just did they live there, but they ate through a bunch of the baby items that I had stored in there, and of course they pooped and peed on everything. So we called an exterminator who came in and installed Bacchus, these like little metal cage things that plug the ventilation holes in the shed, which theoretically allow for air to circulate, but mice can't chew through them to get in. Problem solved, right? Wrong. While the Bacchus do allow for air to circulate, they do block some ventilation, and as a result, our shed developed a major mold problem, which was mainly concentrated in the ceiling and then eventually all over our stuff. So this summer, my husband and I agreed to leave our kids in France with my mom and dad and my aunt, and we would come back and tackle cleaning up the shed properly and sorting out all the issues I just described. So many, many, many trips to the Avalex later, we had thrown away everything that was going and we knew what we were keeping. I spent my days cleaning every single item we moved everything into our living room so the shed could be completely empty while a painter came in to tackle the roof issues. After treating the mold with some chlorine, the painter used a turpentine-based paint to paint over the remaining mold stains and to give the shed a fresher and cleaner look. After he was done, my husband and I then assembled our new shelves because our old previous shelves had been like lost to the mold. Um, and then we eventually ended up organizing our shed into what it is now. 
So now it's clean, mold and mouse free, and it looks great. And I just hope that we don't have any more issues coming up with this house anytime soon. So you guys, that's it. Other than swimming in the pool, which you saw in the intro, uh, but I can show you more because we don't show our kids in the vlogs. That's it. That's kind of how we spent our month of August. Uh, it was wonderful and very low key. I hope that you enjoyed seeing a bit of what we did this summer and please let me know in the comments below what you did this summer. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I can't wait to chat with you in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!